Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today we're gonna to have a look at five daggers from the 16th century, really based around England. Uh, so the styles are different in different parts of the world. Fashion started really in Italy and then tended to move uh, westwards towards England. So we're always behind the rest of the continent. The first dagger we're going to talk about is a simple quillen dagger. So you see one similar to this, uh, all the way back to about 1070 is the earliest manuscript evidence of it that I've seen. But it's a very simple dagger and stylistically things change a little bit, particularly the pommel. But fundamentally, this dagger form just continues all the way through until sort of 1550, uh, even 1600. Because don't forget, if it's not your primary purpose to be a, a soldier, for instance, you don't need the latest up-to-date kit. You just take what you've got. So there's a particularly good picture of, uh, by Dura of a, a merchant going to market. And he's wearing a sword that's 200 years too old for the Dura picture. He just took something that worked. So although perhaps it's a little old fashioned by this point, this dagger will suit somebody in the 16th century who for instance is going to muster. So it, fighting is not his primary thing, but he has to turn up with weapons. That's part of the, the deal. So he turns up and he takes what he's got. This sort of thing, perfectly suited to somebody who's going to go on campaign, who's going to go fighting, but doesn't really want to invest his money. Next up is a bollock dagger. Now this handle is quite different to the earlier bollock daggers, which tended to be turned. I'm not certain how these were manufactured, but it looks to me like they're actually carved out of a plank. This one I refer to as a, a Mary Rose bollock dagger. The Mary Rose was Henry VIII's flagship and it sank just off this southern coast in 1545. And it was absolutely chock full of daggers similar to this form. Quite a long blade on it, 12 inches, 30 centimetres, or thereabouts, a little bit bigger and smaller, obviously. And this hexagonal or octagonal hilt very often. And again here, it comes down with an impact plate, a brass plate at the bottom here. And that's just pinned in place. Um, so that you can actually manufacture it very easily. So there's a couple of pins there that you can see. So this is the sort of dagger that you'll be seeing on a lower status kind of a guy. So it's not gonna be merchant class, it's not gonna be well below that. So yeoman farmers, uh, tradesmen, workers, journeymen, uh, sailors, of course. The kind of people who do a hard living will be wearing knives such as this. The next up is the dudgeon dagger but I'm gonna show this now side by side with the Mary Rose dagger. The dudgeon dagger was a popular knife form in the north of England, southern Scotland, towards the end of the 16th century. But there are quite a few similarities between the Mary Rose style bollock dagger and the dudgeon dagger, and you can see how one has led into the other. So you have an impact plate here at the bottom of the Mary Rose, usually of brass or bronze. Here we have an impact plate which is usually of steel, but the, the location is the same. You often have two pins here and here, which go through the balls and into the guard. The reason they're there is it's not a structural thing to hold the knife together. It's to locate that guard when you're carving the handle because otherwise the guard keeps on moving and you won't get a good fit. So it's just to locate the two while you're working it. Both of these have got some sort of a, a pretty washer at the top, a peen washer. So there's a lot of language, a lot of similarity between these two. The thing that is also notable about the Dudgeon Dagger is they certainly had double-sided diamond edge blades, but also you quite often see some slightly weird forms where it's flat on the back, and then with these two um, very oblique shaped edges here to give an isosceles triangle. And then a large ricasso here. This one has just been hollow ground a little bit, but very often with Dudgeon Daggers, you have a flat here and you have a motto engraved on it. So often these mottos, which are on the Rocasso, are very personal things. Then they've not just been bought out of a catalogue or a, a showroom like that. So you often get dates on them, you get a little bit of scroll work, but then you get some sort of a motto like, God guide thy hand or um, 
Lord smite my enemy or, or whatever. Um, there's a particular one that I came across years ago, which said, eat cheese or die, which I thought was a fantastically weird motto. And so in fact, I just had to go and make one of those. And the sort of people that would wear these daggers because of the geographic location being north of England, southern Scotland, yeah, it's going to be border reavers, but it's also going to be the people who are trying to deal with border reavers. So it's going to be the merchants, the farmers, uh, the better to do people, the gentlemen of, of northern England, southern Scotland at this time. That's who would like these type of daggers. Now dealing with about the same time period are left hand daggers. So these would be worn by a gentleman type fella who's wearing a rapier and they go on the small of the back so you can reach behind and grasp it with your left hand. So these have been set up with a little staple on the back here so it just hangs on the belt at an angle like that and it allows you to reach behind and to pull it out. The last dagger we're going to talk about is the stiletto. The origin for these is in Italy and they're also very popular in Spain. The sort of guys who are going to be duelling in the street are the sort of guys who are going to favour stilettos. So it's definitely a status item, definitely a gentleman's type item or a wannabe gentleman's type item. So basically the sort of young louts, lads about town with a bit of money, don't mind a bit of brawling, they're the sort of people who are going to favour this. They're very small, very handy type weapons and they are really frankly unpleasant. They are purely offensive, they are to do somebody harm. That is the purpose of a stiletto. Now as an Italian fashion, they gently and slowly make their way over to England. So it's not that you're going to see these things everywhere, they're not going to be common. But if you are a very fashionable, very well-to-do man um, in London of the time or possibly even Bristol, the, sort of the bigger trade centres, this is the sort of knife that you would aspire to have because it, what it does is it tells anybody who sees it a few things about you. It tells you that you've got money, that you've got contacts, that you're an internationalist, you're a man of learning. It, it, if you own a knife like this, which is not of local manufacture, it says an awful lot more about you than if it is something like a Mary Rose bullet dagger. So this would be the aspiring thing of a gentleman or a wannabe gentleman. Well, I hope you found that interesting. It's obviously not an exhaustive study of all the knives that are available in England in, in the 16th century, but it shows you sort of five principal types that would have been around and the kind of people that would be wearing them, really. I hope it was interesting. I'd like to thank all of my models for taking part, and especially I'd like to thank Kentwell Hall for such a fantastic location. So thank you, see you again. <laughs>